So I think the reason uh, they invited me today, it's, you know, I'm a nice guy, I think, I hope, I try to be, but it's really particularly because of my relationship with the Eco-Socialist International. Um, you raise your hand if you've never heard of the Eco-Socialist International. Yeah, nice. So this is your lucky day. Uh, it's, you don't always get to hear good news. Um, so you, today you get to hear good news that there is an Eco-Socialist International. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people in the communist tradition here who familiar with what an international is. Um, sometimes it's confusing in this generation because it's like, is it a noun or an adjective? International, what does it mean? You got to go back to history. But um, I've spent a lot of years uh, with Eco-Socialist Horizons, with Joel Covell, trying to develop literature and uh, discourse around the theories of eco-socialism. Uh, this comic book here, which everybody gets a free copy of, uh, is, is all about that. Um, but I'm not, I could talk about it all night. Please come talk to me all night. I'm at the campground. Um, but uh, I, I really want to focus on this, this document, which represents, which we got copies here. We'll pass around. Um, which I think represents the climax and sort of the, the highest stage of eco-socialist organizing on an international level that we've come to so far. Not that it's the end point, uh, it's the point of departure. Um, just a little, some basics about it. Um, people came together in 2017 um, in Venezuela in three maroon communities in the state of Yaracuy. Uh, and their representatives came from around the country, including uh, sort of the farthest, most distant indigenous communities from Amazonia and the Sierra de Perija. That's just local in Venezuela. And then in addition to that, there were um, about 30, 25, 30 international delegates that came from all over the world. Um, and there were, in order to prepare the, to get to that point, there were two years of international gatherings to prepare for that point. So to define what is eco-socialism, what are the criteria to participate in this, what, what is the role of an international in the 21st century. So there were multiple years of preparation just to get to the point where we brought the people together. And what the people did when they came together, um, maybe I'll just read you a couple names here so you have a sense, um, just, uh, internationally of who has signed on to this. Um, in, in Oceania, in uh, Indonesia, Taring Padi, if people heard of that arts collective. Um, in Asia, the Sarvodia Shramadana movement. Um, in Sri Lanka, the Mesopotamian ecology movement in Kurdistan. Um, in Africa, uh, the United African Alliance Community Center in Tanzania. I know a lot of people around here have some connections with that Mama C's group. I'm not gonna read all of these. Um, in the United States, uh, Cooperation Jackson. Um, the Guardians of Water School of Sanding Rock, um, Labor Community Strategy Center in Los Angeles. Um, so a lot, I don't know, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but there were, I have personally never seen as holistic of a, of a gathering um, internationally um, as this. And the way this document was written was um, literally uh, sentence by sentence in small groups. So you find the sentences of over 100 people in the document. Um, para los, para en español, mejor que leen uh, el documento original es el español. You read the original in Spanish, it's probably better. Um, the English one is for everybody else. I didn't bring Spanish copies. Um, and so I could go on and on about it. I just want to make a couple points, which I think have been touched on here. Um, one of the things when we first got together to a few crazy people who had this idea, um, you know, how do we define this? What, what is eco-socialism? And one of the first preparatory meetings in 2015, it was in this town in, called Monte Carmelo, state of Lara, uh, a big seed saver gathering. That was sort of the social base for the first conversation about this. And this very radical idea came up first that eco-socialism would be defined by eco-socialists. So it's, not, it's gonna be what we do. So the criteria for participation in this, in this event in this international was people who have eco-socialist practice. Who has eco-socialist practice? And then, you know, we went down the list, defined that a bit. So it sounds simple, but it actually was a big shift because suddenly everybody that had written all the books on eco-socialism wasn't invited anymore, <laughs> necessarily. And that actually got a little bit complicated. I'm happy to share details, but we don't need to. Um, the people who were invited, on the contrary, were people who often aren't at events like this. They're, they're the ones that are most connected to the soil, to their communities, to their, their, you know, the work they're doing. You know, eco-socialism isn't just farming, it's also education, it's spirituality, it's uh, giving birth and dying, 
It's the whole human experience. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's something that really um, helped accelerate our unity in coming together with this, is that we didn't come together to argue about how to define eco-socialism. Um, we came together to find unity in practice rather than in theory, um, which I, I would recommend. I think it's a really good way to work. Um, although I've also put a lot of time into the theoretical work, that's also important. Um, another thing that was helpful for this is there was a, a big slogan, again, came in 2015, very popular in Latin America, solo el pueblo salva el pueblo. Only the people can save the people. And uh, so one of the first things that we came off the bat with is um, that we're sort of tired of making demands and denunciation of the state. That usually what happens, we get together and we say, we denounce, you know, we can all do the laundry list of horrible things happening in all our bioregions. And then what happens, we come up with these demands, like who's gonna look at them? Like who's, what's, what's gonna happen? I mean, in certain cases, maybe you can get a reform, but in general, we decided that we were coming to make demands of each other. Um, we're not going to spend our time just articulating how bad capitalism is. We already know that. Uh, what are our, what's our plan? And so the idea of our plan, it came together from a big long conversation about what's the problem, what's capitalism, and there was an agreement that uh, it's, it's deeper than capitalism. It's, uh, it goes back at least 500 years. It was more of a conversation about colonialism and the Inquisition, the beginning of patriarchy, loss of women's control over their bodies. So we said, okay, if we, need, if we want to have a plan, it has to be a 500-year plan. Because it took us 500 years in the Americas in particular, but also Africa and Asia, a lot of places, to get us into this mess. So it's going to take a 500-year plan to get us out. It has to be an inter intergenerational, long-term plan across every sector. And we got to raise our children inside this plan and, uh, you know, and proceed that way. So that was, that, those were sort of two paradigm things that I think helped facilitate this unity. The idea that we find unity in practice, that eco-socialism is going to be defined by eco-socialists um, rather than by what it says in the book. Um, to, and also to go on that to expand what we, when we talk about eco-socialism, we're talking about a, uh, you know, egalitarian social relations and harmony with nature. You say it in a lot of ways. Suddenly it becomes apparent this is not a new thing. This is an ancient thing, right? People have been doing this for tens of thousands of years. Um, so who are the eco-socialists? It's like the indigenous people around the world are the original eco-socialists. And then we started talking about maroon communities. You know, how Mar the maroon communities went through this the worst displacement possible, imaginable, but then found a way to reconnect with their ecologies, to, to, to work together with indigenous peoples. And so the, we, we started to think about who are the revolutionary subjects of eco-socialism. It's not just the trade unions and the parties. It, there's like, it's like maybe 70% of the world. Somebody said, uh, David said, um, a lot of people are fascist and don't know it yet. A lot of people are eco-socialists and don't know it yet. Um, and, and, and a lot of these, I think one of the, the points in this that, that comes in is that uh, we don't always see eco-socialism as something that's far off in advance that we might never get there. It's also in our past. Part of this is getting back to our ancestral roots. Um, that's part of, we, we see the past, one of the lines in here is seeing the past not just as a, point of as, as a point of departure, but as a point of arrival, to get back to the way that it once was, um, which is quite an epistemological break from uh, a lot of the Marxist tradition. So I think everybody here, from what I've heard, everybody's gonna resonate a lot with this. I think it, it's challenging uh, for a more traditional Marxist left to wrap their heads around. Um, but I, I really look forward to hearing, uh, hearing your responses. How much time do I have? Anybody give me a sense? Uh, I, I did a terrible job doing on my back. You're at 11.30. Okay, I got a couple more minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, Maybe I'll end early. I mean, I could, I could, I'm just at risk of going on for so long. I don't want to do that to you. Um, but I really do have a lot of, a uh, lot more things to say in private conversations. This document is organized into five chapters. There's a diagram on the last page. Um, the, the five chapters are air, earth, water, fire, and ether. And part of the idea here is that the way we've been organizing a lot of the times in silos, in the left is, is wrong. We have to have a different way of relating to each other that's more connected to uh, Mother Earth. And that's sort of, maybe I'll close on, on that note. That's sort of the big overarching thing here is um, a return to Mother Earth. How can we all return to, to Mother Earth? 
And we talked about how there are some people that have never been uprooted from Mother Earth, right? They've, they, their answer, they've always been there. There's a larger circle of people who got uprooted, but now have returned. And they've, you know, they might have been uprooted generations ago, now they're back. And then there's the biggest group of people, probably a lot of us here, who are pretty uprooted, but we're on a process of getting back to Mother Earth in word and action. Um, basically, that's what I want to say at the end of this. I think that as we move forward, eco-socialism has to become a way of life. Um, being a little bit self-critical as somebody who's been advocating eco-socialism for 10 years, um, I think organizing around a discourse is very difficult. Um, there's a lot of problems come up along the way. Um, this, ultimately, this has to be about the way we live. It has to be about um, the food we eat, the shelters that we live in. It has to be about how we raise our children. Um, it has to be measurable. It can't just be like an idea. It has to be measurable in terms of the health of the air and the water and the soil. Um, it has to do with spirituality. It has to do with music, food, love, care, work. It has to do with how we're born and how we die. Um, what kind of clothes we're wearing. Um, the Buddhists have a concept called right livelihood. I think this is important. How can we be right with Mother Earth? Um, so, you know, it sounds all... Sounds nice. I don't know. How do we get there? I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm sort of stating my willingness to uh, move from a discourse to a way of life. And I think that it doesn't mean we stop protesting and we got to keep doing everything we're already doing. Um, but I think that that's, that's what this is, I think, a recipe for, is a 500-year plan to get back to Mother Earth as a way of life. And uh, I'm very excited to engage with you all um, at greater length. Um, hope I didn't miss anything. Thank you.